Hey guys, Yoshi here. Today, I'm going to show you Vein Bolo from headquarter position. Headquarter is a very strong position that like we easy to set up major guard passes. Usually used for guard passes, but other option, you can switch to modern techniques like Vein Bolo or some other variations. All right, let's just start with like a simple entry for headquarter. One of major ways against De La Hiva. Then today I'm not gonna show specific details, I just wanna show the way briefly. So he makes the Hiva like this, then he control my knees. I wanna take it one by one. This is like a simple drill, I grab his ankles, then take a step back, like to pivot action, like this. Then next thing one, I like to sit down on his right ankle. Then I have set up the headquarter position. Then all of this is pretty simple, I just wanna squat down at this spot instead of driving my weight on him. Just because I wanna focus on controlling his lower body. So, it's not necessary to apply pressure on his upper body at this place. So, all I do is literally squat down. Then, if you guys will make it tight, you can even grab your person's calves like this. That's an anchor instead of driving away forward. So, this is headquarter I like to set up. And one of my favorite positions for major guard passes. Then, this is a kind of a technique, like bearing ball from top position. I want you to see that. As I unlock his legs from De La Hever, I'm about to make a kind of De La Hever on his right leg. Let me just show you. So here I'm sitting down, then look, this is a structure. I pinch his right leg with my bottom legs like this, which means, yeah, quite similar to double guard. Then I'm about to play De La Hever. So once you understand it, it's not complicated to do. So from this, I just slightly make the angle. I look at the opposite side, and then I wanna grab his belt with my right hand on this. Then next one is the most important part in order to stay tight. When the time you roll forward, you wanna make a control behind your partner's knees. On the left, left side, I already make a hurt, like hurt like this. Other side, I need to use my left leg by the time I roll forward. I want you to see the path. I grab his belt, then I fall on my right shoulder. By the time I roll, look how I get my left leg behind his right leg. I just make it slower. So this is the position. I start taking advantage. So this is right after roll. As you can see that I make two locks behind his knees. On the far side, I use my right leg. Near side, I use my left leg like this. Now I want to make the perfect lock when the time I make this situation. That's why instead of using below my knee on my right, left side, I want to use behind my knee against his knee like this. So this is the perfect lock I want to make. From that position, I already can take his back from this position. Since I control both of his knees plus near side hips. I want to make one more grip from this position. So I grab the middle of his belt like this or pants, that's along his spine. Then next thing what I'm going to do is stack his body to expose his upper body. Although I make locks are on his lower body, his upper body is still away. So if I stay here, he can easily escape. It's like extend his legs like this, then he's gonna get back away. You may have to explain before. So in order for me to take an advantage from this position, taking an advantage, I wanna take off his lower back from the ground. So I use my legs to raise his up, plus, grips like this. See that? I start stacking him with exposes his back. This is right after stack. His leg is getting away. Then I'm about to access his upper body. Now I wanna switch grips to reach his upper body. Like literally cramming up his back. One, then I make my right hand free. Then there's been so many ways to make a grip on my right hand. What I like is grab the car on the back of his neck. After I stack him like this, I can reach it here. I use my four fingers to make a strong anchor. Once I set up, he can no longer slide away. Although he tries to escape, I can really connect it with him. He can no longer make more distance. Then from this position, I want to adjust the angle. I push his hips far away like this. I pull his upper body, I'm getting close to him. Then next, I want to make chest to back. In order for me to do that, I do hip escape by stepping the floor to move up. By the time I move up, look, I want to press down his hips. Hip bone comes right in for my belly. Then I pull his upper body. I'm about to make chest to back. After like this, I establish a seat belt, second hook, then I take the back. 
So this is the bearing borrow from headquarter. In the next one, I show you more variations. Okay, next one, twist hook variation. But before we go, I wanna explain small details in order for you to stay tight and not to get counter tap. If you don't make the maximum leverage or like make a good connection, you have a risk to get taken back as well. So like I told you before, I wanna make double knee control with my legs when I tie my roll. That's gonna take an advantage that I only can take his back. Let's say if I roll forward, see that? I only control far side knee. That means his access, he's free to access to reach my hips. Once he grabs the far side hips like this, I can no longer chase his back. The, all he wants is pretty simple. He just needs to use both of his hands to pull my hips. Then he should be able to reach my back like this. So in order for you guys to avoid, you have to make double knee control, especially the side you roll, this side. I want to make a hook like this. If you can make knee lock from the beginning, that could be great, but no rush. As long as you keep it like this, you still have the shield. It's a little hard for him to reach my back. Although he tries to pull, I see an advantage. Then during the time I do the action, I wanna adjust it. Just like I push his leg up, then I adjust like this. Once I've done it, way easier than first thing I fall on the mat. All that I try to do, since he makes an angle like this, it's way harder for me to reach his upper body. If I spend time, he may be able to find a chance, like once he unlock this leg, it's like we're in a 50-50. It's still a good position, but I wanna make the maximum leverage to attack my opponent. That's why I keep it here. Then, instead of raising his hips up, I'm more like putting his hips on my belly, so I, grab the belt or the pants like this, and then as if I make it more angle. Literally, I wanna make the cross with him. Like this, okay? Even this time, I slightly push his hips, then I scoop my hips. Once I make this angle, let's say now it's like a 120 with him. So this is ideal angle, like easier for me to do the next action. So from this, I switch my right hand to grab far side hips. Once I down, like 80-20, I have more advantage. It's way harder for him to take the back. Although he tries to extend his legs to flip my hips, my legs should be way heavier. Even I use my arm frame. The next one is the most important one in this technique. I'm going to switch my legs. Twist the hook. I want to use my right leg against his right leg. This time, I use my left leg against his right leg. That's why I just want to change the structure. It's pretty simple from here to here. Since I coordinated all things, I was gonna be pretty easy to switch it. After I go like this, I set my own heel. Then it's gonna be the same thing as like last one. I wanna reach his upper body, but this time I have stronger frame. That's a twister hook. I use my legs to expose his back. After I go like this, I reach the back of color. Or well, other variation, you can make diagonal control. So from this, instead of raising your right hand, you make the diagonal lock, like using your left hand to cup his shoulder. So this is a great way to control opponent. As you can see that I'm controlling right side of his hip bone and left side of his arm, shoulder like this. So the diagonal side, so he can no longer rotate or go away. So dominant lock. And this time I wanna pull his arm, like doing an arm drug at this position. As I do so, I can slide my right arm under like this. Then around this, switch my legs to make a hook to sit back. Other option, if you can reach the collar, you can even make collar grip for the choke. It's gonna be another like uh, pleasure that he needs to react. Then it's way easier to proceed action to take the back. All right, now let's do the whole sequence from headquarter. Vein borrow and twist hook variation. First, our dominant legs are people to make headquarter like this. I squat down on his ankles like this. Then I just wanna make some space inside his frame. Then I grab his belt, I fall on the mat. When the time I roll, I want to make sure that I look at the opposite side and make a lock behind his right knee. 
just like this. Left after roll, knee lock is not good enough. That's why either I just only use my right leg or even use the other side of my hand to adjust. Once I adjust, I will reach his upper lower body, I grab his belt and raise this up. Once I raise, I grab back of the neck, adjust to take the back. Next one, it feels like a little heavy for me to stack his lower body, then it's a bit harder to expose his upper body. So in that case, I switch to twist the head. As we're pulling his on my belly like this, then I want you to make sure to keep the double knee lock. Once you lose, you lose an advantage, which is no good for you. After you set up to your angle, you switch your leg from here to here. Then single twist leg is not good enough. That's why I want you to reinforce it with the other side of your leg. Either step it on heel or make one more lock. I prefer to kick in the on heel, which is easier to send opponent to the side. So from this, I send him to the side. I start exposing back. Variation, instead of reaching the car with my right hand, I will use my left hand, diagonal lock, like this. Instead of moving him up himself, I drag him to reach his upper body, make second half. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please just hit the like button, give us any comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you, catch you guys next one, bye.